All right, it's Monday evening. It's weather for Weather Geeks time. Hope you had a good weekend, everyone. Welcome back. And uh, this week's going to be kind of a busy week, at least the first half of the week. Things look pretty calm at the end of the week. But the next few days uh, featuring some chances of thunder, a few snowflakes, wild swings in temperatures. And, you know, it's a little more like a spring pattern, of course. And spring is a time of the year that we can oftentimes see some pretty dramatic changes. We had 63 at the airport today after 46 yesterday, so a noticeable change. And, you know, we just had that one cool day at the start of the weekend on Saturday, but up, up and away the temperatures today. And, you know, we're almost done with February at this point, and it's certainly going to uh, go into the record books as at least the sixth warmest February on record. I think it's possible the way the math works out that we're going to climb a couple of spots here by the time Thursday is through and we add up all the numbers, we may end up around the fourth warmest February on record. Right now we stand at almost eight degrees warmer than the average. And, you know, I'll tell you, I didn't, and I didn't see any other meteorologist who saw this coming. Uh, The uh, winter forecast really crashed and burned this month, that is for sure. Uh, A warm February was not on the menu for this winter season with the kind of setup that we had with El Nino and some of the analogs. You know, we just really hard to find a warm February in this kind of a setup in uh, in the past. Anyway, back here in the current uh, time frame, uh, what a day we had across the middle of the country today. Records falling all over the place. Dallas hit 90 this afternoon, 85 in Dallas-Fort Worth at this early evening hour. And look how far north some of this warmth is getting. I mean, it's in the 70s as far north as Omaha. Chicago's at 66, St. Louis uh, well up into the 70s at this early evening hour. So yeah, some pretty remarkable warmth. Uh, heading off to the north and also the dew points are starting to come up and this will be kind of a key as to how the weather is going to play out over the next couple of days again more of a spring-like system so we're going to talk about dew points we're going to talk about moisture in the air in addition to the wind dynamics and wind shear and things that are going on up above our heads but this increase in moisture and strengthening low pressure off to our west is going to perhaps make things a little bit noisy for a time not here locally but off to our west now this is a low confidence thing but it's possible to be a couple of feisty thunderstorms later on tonight places like detroit toledo dayton cincinnati it's not a slam dunk though it's very very you know marginal this risk Uh, in fact it's a level one on the one to five scale and you know we're going to be saying those words often over the next several months and just a reminder of what you know these severe weather uh, risk scales and numbers mean you know the terminology the reason we like the number system is because the terminology for a lot of people is just kind of confusing i'm not a big fan of the terminology myself um but you go one to five and that's a little easier for people to digest now in eastern ohio and western pa we're in a marginal risk a a level one risk of severe weather on average about 30 to 40 times per year uh slight risk the level above that we cut the number in half it's about 20 to 25 times per year and then once you get up to level three four and five it becomes much more uncommon around the Youngstown area and into western Pennsylvania. Enhanced risk level three a couple of times, a few times a year on average. I think we had three last year. Uh, Moderate is very rare, and a high risk is something we almost never see in our part of the country. That is certainly more common out across the uh, true heart of the Midwest and down into parts of the Deep South as well. Now tomorrow, into tomorrow night, Eastern Ohio and Western PA does, so we are outlined, I should say, from the Storm Prediction Center in that level one risk of severe weather. I think there's going to be a couple of rounds of showers and storms tomorrow into tomorrow night. And while the risk is overall much, much higher, I think, off to our north and west, closer to the area of low pressure where the atmospheric dynamics will be better. Places like Fort Wayne, Grand Rapids, Detroit, Toledo, Lima, Indianapolis, places like that. Around Youngstown, you know, I can't rule out a couple of feisty storms, especially tomorrow night. Now, tomorrow morning and middays round, there could be some hail in that. I think there's a somewhat higher risk of not only hail, but maybe isolated strong winds and a really, really low end, but non-zero tornado risk uh, tomorrow evening with the second round. And it's probably late in the evening. It might even stretch past midnight. You know, my initial window here, 9 p.m. to midnight, depending on what the... uh, uh, the, the latest high-res models do this evening. I might shift this forward by a couple of hours so it's more like 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. or something like that. Um, this is when, you know, there's going to be some some pretty strong winds up above our heads and a couple of rounds of showers and storms are going to try to move through. So, you know, it's a, it's a low-end risk for severe weather, but it's something that certainly can't be ruled out. And again, I think this comes in two waves. One morning and midday on our Tuesday, and then the rest of the afternoon and early in the evening should be pretty quiet across... Uh, our region 
And as we go into tomorrow evening, showers and storms will start to bubble up again off to our south and west. Now again, the model here at 8 p.m. is not showing much out here in that slight risk area, but I think it'll try to become more active. This is going to be the sweet spot out here where, where our low pressure system, where our warm front and cold front all, are all in pretty close proximity. We don't have those that set of ingredients necessarily uh, in eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania. But yeah, tomorrow night could be pretty noisy off to our north and west, and even around here I can't rule out a gusty storm or two with those risks that I outlined. Everyone should get wet though around midday on Wednesday. This is with our cold front, and this is a doozy of a cold front. This is going to bring a line of showers and gusty storms, probably late morning, very early in the afternoon. It probably ends pretty quickly between noon and 2 p.m. And then as the cold air wraps in, there might even be a snowflake or two by the end of the day. Don't think the snow is really going to add up to much. Then high pressure builds in for Thursday and for Friday. This is going to be a dramatic change around midday on Wednesday. We'll start out the day not far from 60 degrees, but right around 11 o'clock noon, from west to east, you're going to see those temperatures tumbling quickly. And so we're going to go from lower 60s to lower 40s in just a few hours. And again, by about sunset Wednesday evening, not going to be surprised if we have a couple of snowflakes meandering, meandering around. In fact, I think we'll plummet all the way down into the 20s overnight Wednesday night into Thursday morning. But, you know, this has been the theme, and we just had one of these quick cold shots at the start of the weekend. Um, it's going to be another quickie. I mean, we're just three degrees below average on Thursday. And then we're right back above average Friday afternoon. What a first weekend of March it should be. A mix of sun and clouds Saturday, mostly sunny Sunday into the mid-60s. And probably the warmest weather that we've had so far this year is coming our way for a day or two early next week. A week from today, not going to be surprised if some thermometers touch. 70 degrees. All right, real quickly before we leave you this evening, I posted this on social media earlier. Um, hopefully by now you're starting to think about your plans for the eclipse on April the 8th. I've got my sun, my, uh, my not my sunglasses, my eclipse glasses already uh, purchased. I'm wearing a pair. You can find these just about anywhere. They're not going to look exactly like I have here. Some of them are made of cardboard, some other materials, but you can find them all over Amazon. Even some local brick and mortar type stores are going to have these, and they're inexpensive. You're, you're going to spend a few bucks on these. And, you know, you just want to make sure that you're getting something that's that's certified by NASA, that's rated for eclipse viewing. Welders, glasses, and things like that are not good enough. You need something that will enable you to look directly at the sun. And I went outside this afternoon and took these for a spin uh, just because I hadn't used them yet for this event. And I looked at the sun, and while it was a little hard to see without, you know, a telescope or high-end photography equipment, there's very, the sun is very active right now. There's a lot of sunspots on the face of the sun. In fact, there's a cluster of sunspots on the sun right now that's as big as 10 Earths. It's enormous. Um, and so that's a very prominent feature on the sun right now. So on our sunny days coming up, if you've got your eclipse glasses already, you know, go outside, put them on, take a look at the sun, and uh, maybe you'll be able to spot those uh, sunspots. Again, make sure if you're going to uh, try that, that you have glasses that are that are good enough to do such a thing. You want the real deal. And again, you can find them in many, many places at this point. And, you know, sooner is better as far as purchasing those things. A lot of people are going to wait until the last minute. There might be some places that sell out of Eclipse glasses. If you wait until the first week of April to pick these things up, you might regret it. Hopefully we don't regret the weather on April the 8th. We're, of course, holding out hope for a nice sunny day, kind of like we had today. That'll do it for me on Weather for Weather Geeks on this Monday evening. We'll have a busy one on Tuesday, tracking those potential thunderstorms. We'll talk more about the longer range, and coming up later this week, we'll probably do a winter recap and a spring forecast here on Weather for Weather Geeks and on my weather blog and WFMJ.com as well.